الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه وأهل بيته ومن اتبع سنتي أجمعين فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب الشرح لصدري ويسر لأمري وحل الأغضة من لساني يفقه قولي uh, الحمد لله today uh, we will start with Surah Ar-Rum Roman uh, or the Rum that's the name for the Rome or the Italy what we have today but it, Rome was an empire so this is what is in reference to it is uh, 84th chapter in the sequence of revelation and the sequence of recitation it is 30th chapter and it was revealed in Mecca except the verse number 17 and uh, number uh, also uh, yeah so number 17 was in uh, Medina um, as you should know, then after this will be a Surah al kabut a spider, and then is Mutafafifin. That is about the people who cheat in their majors. And these were the all revealed in Mecca. After that, we'll start the Medina revelation. And uh, uh, Surah Rum, chapter Rum, is revealed about uh, 615 CE when the Persian Empire invaded or they had a fight and they used to fight for the space between Persian and Roman Empire and Persian defeated Roman and they had absolute taken over the victory in that as you know the Roman Empire was very huge and massive which is spread out from Europe to this uh, what you call Eastern Europe to the Western Europe and on down to the Middle East and, and Africa and even those who countries or the uh, what you call the governors who were ruling from Africa were under uh, the king of uh, Rome and they were at really they were the Christian Empire and they were believer after the um, King Constantine uh, become Christian and his mother Helena when they took over Jerusalem that's when they changed the religion in a form um, so this was a lot of details but then Roman have been a very dominant force and what is known in the history what I have read about is that then it becomes so massive that they have to divide into three portions one was the Eastern a uh, Orthodox group then there was a Catholic group and then there were a ruler which were in uh, Turkey and what we know that uh, in Egypt so when Egypt uh, when Alexandria was the seat of king uh, then they used to they split up and they when the Muslim took over they moved over to uh, Turkish side which is Istanbul uh, which used to be uh, the seat of uh, Christian uh, and Empire rule and then when the uh, Uthman, um, what we known as the Arthogrul movie, a Turkish when they took over that portion and they in, included it into their empire or their government, which was the Khilafat Uthmania, and that was 600 years they undisputedly rule over the majority of that region. So there's a lot of history about it. So this chapter, a room, is about that uh, when uh, Persian defeated uh, uh, who were paganists they were fire worshiper to the believers who were people of the book as Muslim referred to them. Uh, at that time, there was an incident reported uh, that uh, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu uh, had a kind of a conversation and a bet with another uh, uh, Meccan who were paganists. So they associate themselves Meccan as part of the Persian uh, believer because they both worship uh, idols. And um, Christians were considered part of the Muslim faith resemblance because Muslim talk about Jesus and Christianity and Islam. So they taunted Muslim and they said, look, finally, we, our people prevailed over your people in the war. So Prophet Sallallahu said, tell Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr came in and he said they want to, they want to bet, make a bet with me about uh, the rule. So Prophet Sallallahu said, make a bet that you will have a hundred times or a hundred camels or something like that, that soon the Roman will take over Persian territory or Roman will be victorious shortly. So this chapter talks about a future. Uh, as with Islam, uh, we know Quran talks about past, present and future. And things are happening and they were undisputed. So we're talking about a situation where Roman have lost the battle uh, Persian have taken over the territory 615 Christian era or what you call common era CE and Quran is predicting a future event which was supposed to happen and Abu Bakr said it will happen between seven and nine years so because of the words in the Quran that's what's supposed to be happening 
so what happened after that, <coughs> what we talk about the Quran is predicting a future. Similarly, Quran predicted about Abu Lahab, who was a living person, and he uh, taunted Islam, he taunted Prophet, and he did not believe. And Quran revealed Tabat Yada Abi Lahabim Watab, Surah Al Lahab. In that chapter, we see that the man is living, his wife is living, they were the uncle of Prophet, his two sons were uh, already uh, had a written uh, relationship of a marriage like what is called Khatab al-Kitab, that is, means uh, not, uh, the daughters have not given away to the groom's family, but she's uh, still living with her fathers uh, or with, the, uh, with their parents, and there's, there's a way of uh, agreement, which is marriage. So paper marriage was done. So they were so close, and his house, uh, uncle's, I mean, Abu Lahab's house was just next, you know, wall was, uh, next wall, on the other side of the house wall was the Abu Lahab's house. So Prophet's house and his house was next to each other. And they used to throw dirt and shout and scream and curse and Prophet, and they would be, Prophet's daughter were living there, his wife was living there. All the family was basically living in the house. And this man was told by the Quran that he should, will be in the hell. And he could have lied and he could have said, listen, I believe in Islam, I believe in God, and this Nauzubillah is fake, Quran Nauzubillah. He never accepted Islam till he died and he never accepted and he died. So what I'm saying is that the Quran predicted while a person was living in a present and he did not dis, uh, accept Islam, Quran called him a person of hell. Similarly, Roman people were told about, and the Quran also talk about the people of the past, the history, what happened between the Christians and the Jews and the prophets and the people of the nation of Ad and Samud and all that. So this is kind of a little uh, information which we uh, which I had known about. So let's begin with this chapter, and it has a lot of information in this chapter about human relation, marriage, trust, color, genes, or what you call the race and ethnicity and all that. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alif la In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, a leaf, lamb, meme. The Romans have been defeated. In the nearer land, and they, after their defeat, will triumph. Within a few years, to Allah, belonged the matter before and to him it belongs. Thereafter, and on that day, the believers will rejoice. So verse number one through four, there are certain uh, more specific detail I should elaborate. The Alif Lam Mim is a huruf al-muqattiat, which is, means the alphabetical con uh, combination. There are four words, Alif, Lam, Mim, and Mim. There are Shadda on it. That means twice that latter. So these three uh, words with the four time repetition is uh, the secret of Allah and his prophet knows sometime in Arabic tradition. These were the words used to take, seek attention when they were to speak. This was the Arabic tradition. So some scholar says, this is the indication of seeking attention. But the other tale says that only Allah and his prophet knows these uh, secrets of these meaning. Ghalibat the Rome, Roman have been defeated. Fi adna al-ardi in the nearer land because Persia was right uh, prevailing over the Roman influence was in the Middle East which we know today is the Gulf uh, sorry the Persian influence was in the Gulf in the on the north and the Syria and the border and where uh, the, or Iraq was a part of them and the Persian were in that territory so as the Roman were coming from the Western if you imagine the map of the Middle East you will see that it is coming from the Egypt into the Syria and Syria is bordering to the Iraq and then to the 
this north of uh, Arabia, which is the peninsula and the Palestine area. So all this is, was their territory, but they were defeated at this time. So fi adn al ardi wa hum min badi ghala bihim, and after their defeat will triumph. They will be uh, triumphant about the war after means they will have a second war quran is predicting fi bid'atin the how did uh, prophet and uh, abu bakr radiyallahu ta'ala anhu said that they will win the war after they will the roman will defeat uh, persian again fi bid'atin in this arabic language it means uh, 7 to 9 years so he predicted it will be less than 9 years because this is the time of this word, word means lillahi al-amru min qabl and it will be the command of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before that min ba'di after that wa yawma izin yafrah al-mu'minun and this will bring happiness to the believers now what is the happiness in this this doesn't make sense because roman did not believe in the quranic or the prophet or the persian believe in prophet and the islam so when a scholar interpret this as the good news for the muslim will be that the christians and Persian or what you call the Roman and the Persian will be engaged in the war and that will weaken them in their strength and this is what happened when Muslim become more dominant the Persian were also not as strong enough because in the fight they have lost a lot of the soldiers because in those days the war was between armies so as the Roman and their strength and their rule was becoming weaker and this was a place where Muslims were not engaged in other words they would not come to the territory of Muslims so that they would take over them but when prophets send the invite to as we have uh, we will uh, have read about that when they went uh, to um, what you call the, the battle uh, the, in, in Medina when Muslims send the invite to the Roman and the, and the Persian and seven uh, total estates prophets send a, a envoy to invite them for the Islam and the Persian killed up uh, a Muslim envoy. Uh, Roman king uh, took the message and he sent Maria Qaptia and a donkey and some gold and two eunuchs and a physician to the, or one eunuch and a physician to profit as a gift. It was one, one of whatever their tradition was. So inshallah we'll come to it, we'll talk about it. So this was the event which happened in Medina, not in Mecca. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Be Nasr Allah, by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nasr means help. Yansuru mayyasha, Allah helps whoever he, he wishes or he will. Wa huwa al-aziz rahim and he is almighty and very, very merciful. So this is a, a future prediction which Quran made and this was something we should know about. Uh, let's listen to the next verse. With Allah, S help. He helps whomsoever he wills. And he is the mighty, the very merciful. It is a promise from Allah. Allah does not fail in his promise, but most of the people do not know. They know something superficial of the worldly life, but of the hereafter they are negligent. مَا خَلَقَ اللَّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ وَأَجَلٍ مُسَمَّى وَإِنَّ كَثِيرًا مِّنَ النَّاسِ بِلِقَاءِ رَبِّهِمْ لَكَافِرُونَ did they not reflect in their own selves? Allah did not create the heavens and the earth and what is between them but with a just cause and for an appointed time. Yet many of the people are disbelievers in the meeting with their Lord. So verse number uh, 6, uh, Allah says, Wa'ada Allah, the promise of Allah, La yukhlif Allah wa'adahu. Allah, La means not, not, 
يخلف, he change or, or turn away Allah. Allah does not turn away from his promise. Wada means prophet. But most people, but most of the mankind, they do not know. يَعْلَمُونَ ظَاهِرًا مِنَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا So they know something. يَعْلَمُونَ They know something. ظَاهِرًا and superficial or apparent in the life of the world. وَهُمْ أَنِ الْآخِرَةِ هُمُ الْغَافِلُونَ And they are about the hereafter ignorant or negligent. غَافِل means the one who does not know or negligent about it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that they only know the worldly matters. And as we know, most of us, we are proficient in certain skills what we know the worldly but we do not know the hereafter and this is where prophets of Allah and the Quran and the other scriptures were revealed before Islam or the Quran the uh, Torah the gospel and the Psalms of David uh, these were revealed before Islam in the Quran or the or what we call the holy book and this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep reminding I am the creator and I am the God who sent the prophet and the scriptures to so believe in it and believe in hereafter do they not uh, reflect or f think about their own existence, self? You see, Quran, talk, Quran is talking in a way that it just touches you. That Think about your own existence. And then Allah created, I created, the, says Allah, Allah says, I created heavens and earth. Whatever is, and whatever is between the earth or what is uh, the planets and the skies, illa bil haqq, I have not created them except as a truth and they are there for a pointed time. There will be an end of this creation. And most of the people are in denial of that remeeting their Lord. And this is something of the significance that Islam reminds us that no matter what you do, whatever you achieve, you should know that you, have, you are born and one day you will die and no human or any creature have lived forever or will live forever. And this is what we think. It is very unusual phenomena. I was listening to a lecture that when we are born, everybody is happy and joyful and uh, distributing sweets and gathering and whatnot. And then there is every day of our birth and every day of our early life, mom, dad looks at us, they play with us, they hold us, hug us, even though we do not know the destiny, what this person will be a bad person or a good person in future. And mom and dad loves this baby to the point that they, every single moment they're watching is a child or her or him and as the baby grows mom and dad are just counting the days okay today is five days old today ten days old today one year old and every little move of us is being reminded and then we come to this stage when the parents become uh, elderly and then we start having our family and they have become grandparents and they are fading away and each one of us is going to have that same destiny. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that you have witnessed your own existence, your own creation, and you see the earth and skies uh, and all this, what is between. It is a truth and it is going to be there for time. But most people do not prepare themselves. Their liqa. liqa means meeting. Rabbihim, their Lord. Lakafirun, they are actually in kufr means denial. So they are in a denial of meeting with the Rabb. And if we collect so much wealth and we strive and struggle to have more and more money and more and more power, more and more name and fame and all that, but it comes to a point where it means nothing. It is left for somebody else. It is being used by somebody else. So this is why Prophet used to say, and as Quran teaches us, that live as a traveler. When we are on a journey, and recently, as Kevin said, he was traveling to London. He was not planning much to buy or hold or possess. Similarly, life is a journey where we are born and we die. And we should not possess wealth and think of that this wealth is my wealth. Is basically earning halal risk is the point. You will get whatever you are destined to get. But it has to be remembered the source and how we earn it and how we spend it and what we leave. And this is what Prophet says. Whatever you ate is yours. Whatever you used is yours. What you left behind belonged to somebody, but you will be accountable for that. So that's why it is emphasized on to raise your children well. So they will be engaged in good deeds. And then you will get the blessing of them. And they should make dua or supplication after we pass away for the forgiveness and for the blessing for us in the life and hereafter, which is Alam which is the grave life. Let's listen to the verse number nine and move on. أَوَلَمْ يَسِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَيَنْظُرُوا كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ كَانُوا 
Have they not traveled on earth to see how was the end of those before them? They were stronger than these in power, and they had tilled the land and had made it more populous than these have made it, and their messengers had come to them with clear proofs. So Allah was not such as could do injustice to them, but they used to do injustice to themselves. Then the end of those who did evil was evil, because they rejected the verses of Allah, and used to make mockery of them. So verse number 9 and 10 talks about the people who came before and Prophet is, and the Quran is referring to the people of the Middle East, which is the people of Ad and Thamud and the people of uh, Rum, or what you call the um, uh, Egyptian and Pharaoh and all those who have lived and they were given might and power and they were stronger and they were living longer. They were powerful and yet because they disbelieve and they did transgression upon themselves as Islam teaches when you do wrong you don't do wrong to anybody but your own self because that it comes around whatever we do wrong to other it will come to us if we are accountable in the worldly life or in hereafter in either case we have to be paying for accountability and this is what our Islamic belief is if there's no accountability what's the point if might is right that's not the way Islam believes even though at part time we are weak but uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mightier uh, as we say, the one who tried to kill it and the one who tried to save, the one who tried to give you life is stronger than the one who tried to take your life. So this is important. We should understand that. Uh, 